about two and a half years ago on this farm of mine I decided to experiment on alternative types of feeding for my chickens. The price of poultry feed was going up very very high and that was about two and a half years ago. Looking at it right now I can even laugh at myself because it's about twice as much as it was then. But hey, at that time, I felt like it was a lot. So I told myself, there should be an alternative way of getting feed. Everyone on the YouTube channel was telling me, you know, there are all these other methods, there are all these other things that people can do in order to feed their chickens. So I told myself, hey, why not try it out? Now currently for us, the biggest cost on poultry feed at the moment is actually the energy source. It is the, the maize, because we mainly use maize. And that's even crazy to think about because a while back, protein was the most expensive source. The prices for the protein sources have remained generally the same, but the price for maize, that is the corn, has more than doubled. It is so expensive, it's almost impossible to perceive the fact that it's this expensive. There's barely anything I'm making out of the poultry business right now, honestly pathetic it's painful but endurance don't forget that I always talk about endurance endurance is key but historically speaking the energy is generally not the most pricey part of it the protein is the most pricey part and in poultry the most common sources of protein have always been soya that's soybean or soya depending on what you call it depending on where you're from sunflower cotton and fish meal I've never really liked using fish meal because it's very easy to for it to get contaminated the sources where they get it from it gets really really contaminated and it's very hard to trust so I end up using sunflower and soya cake and mainly the soya cake but again it gets really expensive so at some point I was thinking let me try out something different the three main alternatives for sources of protein were number one fodder number two black soldier fly larvae and number three azola now the fodder I tried but I wasn't very very successful it was okay but it requires quite some monitoring uh, in order to water it day and morning and night so it's a bit of extra work that wasn't a very big issue though the biggest problem was getting barley yeah barley for us here in Uganda is quite hard to get the barley that I was getting the seeds were treated those were the easier ones to get the other barley you'll have the brewing companies here in Uganda they pay off particular farmers to grow it and sell it to them so sourcing it is very 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 difficult it was very hard so it became an option that is almost impossible for me to take up Azola on the other side there is no ponds Azola needs water so I need loads and loads and loads of water it's 2,000 chickens that I have over here so for me to be able to get enough Azola to feed 2,000 chickens imagine how big a pond that would need to be so it became also impractical you know it's not like you can just dig up a small area you know four by four meters or even ten by ten meters and you have enough now option three which is actually what I really spent my time going for was the black soldier fly larvae so I decided to go after black soldier fly larvae with all my heart I went to a guy who I actually got quite some training from and he told me everything that's necessary to grow the black soldier fly larvae so I bought some uh, eggs from him and some pupa brought them over here right in this area on this farm and i decided to you know try it out give it a chance because it seemed like what's really needed to raise the black soldier fly larvae is nothing apart from west yeah and west can be gotten from anywhere okay people look for places to throw off and you know dump all their waste so i decided hey i'm going to look for this waste and i'm going to do black soldier fly larvae after all the soya that we use usually has about 45 percent protein and black soldier fly larvae if you feed them on good food can actually go to up to 55 percent protein so it seemed like a viable option but it's quite early in the morning it's almost 9 a.m just about the time when we start collecting the first few eggs let's first go inside and check out the birds see how they are performing because currently the feed i'm giving them actually doesn't evolve any black soldier fly larvae it's soya mainly as the source of protein it's working well I won't tell you the story on how I got here. Disinfector boots with a disinfectant as usual. And get up the ramp. Oh yes. I usually prefer the upper section because it has more light and it's easier for us to record in. And you can see the birds. Okay? So they are very excited to see me. As you can see, as soon as you get in, they start shaking their heads. 
turning around trying to see what's happening, what's over here. You can see some of the birds up here hanging. These act as roosting patches occasionally. You can see some birds up here. Yeah. So these posts over here, despite the fact that they are also supports for the structure, they also act as roosting patches. So you can see birds inside there. And then you can see the birds eating the feed. So we can zoom in into the feed. Maybe I can pick some of the feed from inside here. Okay, so you can see our feed. This is our poultry feed that we are using currently. And the main constituents are maize, maize bran, limestone, uh, it has soya and then it has a premix. <laughs> So uh, the birds are taking the food, the water, we have been medicating them. We've been medicating them so I can see that the, the drinkers are a bit empty. So the birds had shown some signs of illness over the past few days. The droppings were not looking nice, they had started changing color and the birds were starting to look a bit sluggish. The production was starting to drop. It had dropped by about 3% from 90% to about 87% and I wasn't happy with that. And when we looked at their behavior and their poop, I knew I could, we could identify the illness. So we decided to stop to start them on an antibiotic. Uh, what's the name of the antibiotic? Doxycycline, yeah? So doxycycline and tylosine. Uh, that's the active ingredient inside the antibiotic. So we gave them that and they are responding properly to the treatment. Currently they have gotten up to 90 to, to 89%. Yeah, 89%. Hopefully by tomorrow, they'll be up uh, back to 90%. So we've decided to give them some extra antibiotics, but that means that we can't use our automatic drinking system because the tanks are too big and we can't put the antibiotic inside those tanks. So we've been giving the water manually inside the drinkers. And what that means is that, of course, the drinkers don't fill up on their own. It makes it a little bit more labor intensive to fill up the drinkers. So once in a while you'll get in and the drinkers are empty. But uh, my colleague over here, um, you can see him, yeah? My colleague over here has brought some water. We're going to be filling up the drinkers and giving the birds the water that they do need. You can see that the birds have been quite thirsty, yeah? Because they are eating feed. So when you're eating feed and you don't have water, you get quite thirsty, yeah? So um, as he pours the water into the drinkers, you can see the birds reaching out to drink all the water. And so we have to fill up all the drinkers and continuously do that, which is quite tiring, but well, that's the price to pay. And then you can see our birds that are laying eggs. There is this chicken inside here making noise. You can see all the eggs that have been laid inside here. Yeah? We have another one here. Let me get out one. You can see our eggs. They're quite big. Yeah? It's a good size of the eggs. We have more eggs inside here. So these are communal laying boxes where you have multiple birds. And you can see some chicken poop on top of the laying box. Ideally, this is not ideal because you don't want the birds to roost on top of here. But well, we don't have an alternative. We keep scraping it off every day. The birds are laying very well. There are two main aspects to ensure that the birds, their production is good. Number one, or three, I can say. If they don't have illness, number one, they have proper feed and they have water available, and the species of the bird is good, then you're going to have very good laying. Those are the main factors to pay attention to. So, as you can see, we are giving them water to make sure that everything is available. The feed is okay, the feed is good, and uh, good quality chicks, firm up chicks, yeah? Like I've said, these birds are laying at a very, very good percentage. It's 90% and it's over 40 weeks. But what more could I ask for, like, honest? Now, my escapade into trying to use Black Soldier Fly Lovey gave me a very big reality check. It's literally impossible to use Black Soldier Lovey on a big scale. 
a lot of guys in the comment section have always been asking me why did you stop using black soldier fly why don't you go back to using black soldier fly and yes it can be used but on a small scale i'll tell you right here on our farm we use maybe 80 kilos maybe 80 kilos of soya every day that's the protein source 80 kilos of soya so if i had to use exactly the same weight or mass of black soldier fly larvae imagine harvesting 80 kilos of black soldier fly larvae how practical or easy is that to have 80 kilos of black soldier fly larvae every day and that's just for 2,000 chickens. I'm expanding. I'm going to be doing 4,000, later 6,000, then 8,000. So I could easily be using or needing 300 kilos of black soldier fly larvae every day. 300 kilos. Now I'll take you through the process of getting this black soldier fly. You have the eggs, the larva, the pupa, and the adult stage. The black soldier fly will lay eggs. It will take them a few days for them to hatch. And then you have some time for them to feed and become the larvae that are big enough for you to be able to reproduce them. And then if you have a big number of those, then you'll use them to feed the chickens. Of course, mix them with the other sources of feed. These ones are really just the protein suppliers. And then the rest of them, you let them go into the pupa stage so that they become adults, and then they give you more eggs and the cycle continues. Now I noticed that the idea is that for you to be able to produce, let's say 300 kilos of black soldier fly, in fact, even just 50 kilos of black soldier fly larvae every day, you literally need a very big, dedicated team to do that. You need maybe four or five people in a big area, dedicated, and the other thing is that you need to be able to source this organic waste that they love are going to feed on. And that organic waste needs to be of high quality because you can't give them vegetation or vegetables. The lower that whatever you're giving them is in protein, then the lower that the black soldier fly are going to be in protein. So the black soldier fly, for example, if you're giving them cow dung that has very little protein, they'll probably be at like 30% protein and they will take a very long time to grow. If you give them food that's high in protein and energy, then they're going to grow up quicker and then they'll give you up to even 55% of the protein. So it was very, very difficult, very, very impractical. I thought about it and imagine how far I would have to look, how far and wide I would have to look in order to be able to produce that amount of black soldier flies. And then the other thing is that it's very weather dependent. It's, the technicalities are very complicated. Unlike for example soya, where I'll just go to a market and buy soya and bring it here, you can't just go anywhere and buy black soldier flies. So I would have to do it myself. That's the second project I'm putting myself into doing. But then growing the black soldier fly is affected by a lot of factors. If the light is not good, then the black soldier flies will not be active. And that means they won't mate and they won't give you the eggs that you need. You need to make sure that the moisture inside the organic waste that you're feeding the larvae themselves is at a particular percentage. You need to make sure that you actually have the right source for the organic waste. It became quite complicated. So for that reason, I decided to put it on hold, you know temporarily at some point because I thought I would get back to it. But right now that I've gotten inside and I've actually seen what it involves in order to do these black soldier flies, no, there is no way, there is no practical way in which I can actually do black soldier fly larvae on a big farm like this. And I don't think it's something that I'm going, I'm going to be doing. Now, someone who has 20, 30 chickens, it might be possible. Well, even 30 chickens eat quite an amount, but it might be possible for you. A hundred chickens, maybe, maybe not, maybe, because they eat quite a lot and so you need to put in a lot of effort. The idea is that in the end, it's not as cheap as you imagine it would be. It is very labor intensive for you to get all these raw materials. You might be able to get the waste for free, but then everything else that you need, you need to put up a structure for them. You need to pay guys to do them. Getting to the point where you're actually producing them in a big number is very very difficult in the end you're actually going to end up having to buy this waste because it's impossible for you to get enough amount of waste for you to feed the black soldier flies so yes that's why i'm not doing black soldier fly larvae anymore i know it's been asked a lot on the channel and i've decided to answer it today so for today uh i'll just go with the current protein sources that we have you know the soya cake most commonly and buy it when it's cheap keep it the good thing is that it can be preserved for a really long time buy the cake itself keep it um when it's really cheap and then when the prices rise up hopefully i do have quite an amount of it available to me don't forget to hit that subscribe button smash the notification bell that way you never miss out on an upload lots of love catch you very soon with another video bye